very soon. And our special guest today from the Glove Drop. Uh, and I got you right there. there. Tara there from Stone. Tara, Tara, let me just everybody? answer you. Why don't you say hello to everybody? everybody? Um, real quick, just so we all are aware, the New York Rangers defeated the Florida Panthers last night without Adam Fox. Boom. That's all. Boom. Yes. And oh, actually, you know what? Let's let's just before we even do our interview, let's do a quick Rangers uh, recap for us. So it's exactly that we're doing a little bit of a midseason analysis, but also, guys, always check out the final buzzer with John Falkowski, the man that's right over there, and read his good, bad, and ugly reviews. The Rangers this week mm. beat the Kraken and the Florida Panthers, but lost to the Columbus Blue Jackets and. Uh, Henrik Lundqvist night, great night. A little bit of controversy at the end. More on that in a second. And Phil, I'm going to start with you. What are your thoughts on Henrik Lundqvist night? Uh, the ceremony itself was great. I was there. Um, it was awesome. Yeah, um, awesome. I was in 226, and um, – I don't, uh, the screaming fans couldn't bring it down. This, the constant Zuccaro chants every time his uh, face was flashed up on the, uh, the screen. Um, just a, a amazing ceremony. So awesome. I got a bunch on video. I'll have to upload it at some point on here and uh, be on the lookout for that. But um, the game itself, like, what was that? Like, I don't know what this team has going on with them right now, but there's this inability to play a full 60 minutes and they think they can get by with 20, 30, maybe even 40 minutes if we're lucky Ranger fans of good hockey. And then the other part of it is just complete and utter crap. So we're sitting there watching a game that they get ahead to nothing, get an early lead and they blow it big time again. So the two nothing lead is now the Rangers bugaboo apparently. And uh, yeah, it came back to bite them. And obviously the end, we'll talk about that in a little bit as well, because I think everybody wanted to put their heads to the wall, like the gift from uh, Michael McDonald from uh, Mad TV when he plays uh, Stewie. So yeah. But well, uh, Tara, um, well, Tara, what were your thoughts on Lundquist Night? I thought Lundquist Night was amazing. I think that was one of the most well put together retirements. I think it was absolutely across the board, incredible, um, absolutely deserved all of that respect and then some he is of course the king and they were calling him the icon of the city as well which i completely agree with love the fact that Zuccarello was there to uh you know share that special moment with somebody who he played with for so long and somebody who he considers what would be one of his closest friends and mentors in hockey uh didn't love Zuccarello scoring i'll tell you that for free not a good not a good look would have preferred him to be still a ranger but as far as the retirement ceremony went, I thought it was great. As far as the game went, they're going to think it a little differently on that one. And uh, like you just said, it's a difficult playing a full 60. We're seeing a lot of starting hard, leaving the arena after the first period. It's incredibly frustrating. I know things, I guess they, it's like the dog days of hockey right now, leading up to the all-star break. You see a lot of teams struggling and the Rangers are one of them. Of course, having Adam Fox, being out, which I thought was a day to day. He's on the IR now. You got the D pairs a little messed up. They're not really in sync, but my issues with the whole game was their the effort. You, know, you can't just put the effort down and walk away. They hand they hand the momentum over to the other team. We saw them do it with Columbus Blue Jackets. They did it again. And they almost did it again with the Kraken. But fortunately it seems that Coming into the game last night, they were playing the kind of hockey that they needed to play. And hopefully after this All-Star break, we'll see a lot less of playing down to the level of the other team and actually playing the hockey. I think uh, Shesterkin in a post game, and I had mentioned this in, in one of my videos, Shesterkin in a post game, uh, he had said, it's Brazilian. They're playing like Brazilian style, meaning the other team is being able to score as many as they can. And the Rangers are scoring as many as they want. And that makes a lot of sense to me. And and when they want to score, as we saw last night, they, they can really step up and hopefully that momentum will roll through. Everybody get a little break from the all-star and go from there. Well, Anthony, uh, did you get to see the end of that game? Uh, I didn't see it live. I saw all the 
you know, basically the highlights of it on social media and whatnot. All right. So they they ruled that he that the that Cam Talbot was pushed into the net. Did the refs get that right? The only the only thing I'll say is that Strom definitely used his stick to to push Talbot's pad. Um, other than that, I I disagree with everything else that went on there. But you can't deny that Strom was pushing that Strom pushed Talbot's pad with his stick, and unfortunately, you can't do that. I know he wasn't the one that ultimately put it in the net. Seems like Zabinajad's stick yeah, came yeah, in yeah. front of the screen and knocked it in. Um, but unfortunately, um, every time the refs see that, they're gonna they're gonna say it was interference because of it. The only th- the counterpoint to I'll say to that is if that's the case, they should have blown the whistle. So Strom wouldn't have kept wouldn't have kept whacking at the pad. So it was kind of like a catch twenty two. Here's um, another counterpoint. So it's unfortunate, Strom was, but Strom was pushed into Talbot. He was. He that was, was another strong. counterpoint. I was gonna make it a third counterpoint is in that situation the puck is loose in front of the net. And not to take away from what you were saying, though, if the refs see that, they'll call it. They don't call that every time. It's a 50-50. That type of uh, loose puck in front of the net and, you know, the struggle sticks are going through. That is always up in the air. It's a 50-50. It's on the ref. They make the call. The way that I saw it, and and I'm known for sitting down and going in slowest motion possible, checking everything. I mean, everything from an Achari slew foot embellishment. I'll go all day on it. (laughs) Hyper-focus. That, to me, was... (laughs) It could have gone either way. It's not a solid call. It's up in the air. But uh, as Toronto always does, uh, which I think yeah, comes, I think it stems from I think it stems from a little bit of feeling a little intimidated by the fact that the New York Rangers organization is always neck and neck with them in terms of being the best organization. And you know, why not just let Hank down one more time, Toronto? But <laughs> I do agree that he was pushed in. I do agree that the whistle definitely should have been blown if there was kind of a goalie interference. And yeah, it's a 50 50 call in my book. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the way that I've kind of joked around about this the last few days, that the Rangers honored Henrik Lundqvist for his career, and then the NHL and the refs honored him by screwing over the Rangers once again. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'll never forgive them for the Dwight King uh, game two uh, non goalie interference call, but that's a different story. The other point I got to bring out, guys, is Talbot's reaching for the puck. He's reaching with his left hand. When you reach with your left, your right side goes backwards. It's true. So it's not just Strom pushing it in. Is it a tremendous travesty that's going to cost the Rangers the season? Of course not. Uh, and that'll be more for discussing the rest of the first half. There's but- one last thing that nobody's brought up here with this. And that the point is, is that the call itself is so frustratingly inconsistent that there's never any clarity as to what happens with these calls and the way it's supposed to be called. So yes. it, it's like it's like a catch in football. What is a catch? What is the the the, the feet are down, uh, having to go through and finish the catch and all that other nonsense they talk about? But there's never any consistency, and we never have anything clearly defined in any of this. And that's the most frustrating part about all of it. Even more frustrating is we all know, and you know, you, unfortunately, you see the NHL ref he had hot mic and he get you know loses a job. But you know, if you're pulling on one team and then you kind of owe the other team one or something, and in that situation, the game was got so tight and it's that night and all of that, and the call really is 50 50. I'm just going to give the referees the benefit of the doubt. They all had something very important to get to after the game, and they just couldn't go to OT. Very important <laughs> plans after the fact because it really could have gone either way. But they had to make Hank's after party. Let's just yes, keep it seriously, which I'm pretty sure Steve Valiquette was at. He was looking like he was having a he blast was. during uh, those interviews. Anthony, last reports. word on this. Yeah, goaltender interference. Um, like John said, it's pretty inconsistent across the board. It's too too often than not you see one goal get waved off, and a very similar situation happen in another game throughout the league, and the goal stands. Um, so there's no consistency with it. And the one thing that I really hate is I've seen goals waved off where a player is at the top of the crease, literally doesn't really even touch the goaltender. Like aside from maybe like his back brushing up against like the, the top of his goal stick or whatever it is, the butt, the butt end of it. And they call it no goal. It's just the, the, the player has the right to be there just as much as the goalie has the right to the space in front of him. As long as you're not in the blue paint toppling them over, 
I think it's gone too soft. Yeah, vice versa. And that too, unless you're pulling a Buffalo Sabres goalie coming out and checking people. And I think they really need to... Yeah, I think and they really Aaron need to Dell. come. Well, are, 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 we, are we really going to get into the the phantom Brad Isbister goaltender interference call in Game Five in two thousand seven? Because oh, that God. that's a bad one too. I think yeah. yeah, I think we can all agree though. Goaltender interference is something that needs to be looked at. And you, you know, it's got to be a little bit more of a defined line. It's easier to get away with it back in the day before this replay and before these HD replay super slow mo. Now, now it's technology is making it so that. Uh, you're going to really need to define the lines when it comes down to these rules and what is and what is not. And just Otherwise, what the NFL has done with that. It's it's been a bit of a uh, a problem because everything's frame by frame by frame. Mm-hmm. All right, but what were your thoughts on the Lundquist night and the controversy at the end? Throw it down in the comments below. Again. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.